All right, we're gonna talk about power. And so we'll just go through all the basics of power. The definition is the rate of doing work. The um, variables, power is work over time. And if we derive that, work is force times distance. And that's over time, right? So this FD is U or work. And then so we can express power as force times velocity. And that I think is a much more interesting viewpoint of power. So interaction of these variables, if you're looking at this equation, if you increase power, you must either increase work or decrease the time in which you do that work or if you're gonna look over here at force times velocity, you either increase the force or you increase the velocity. And the units of the measurement are the watt, and that's a joule over a second. So let's answer the question about how to maximize power. So you can either increase your work or perform that work as fast as you can. And if we look at from the terms of force and velocity, if power is force times velocity, either we can, as we said before, increase that force or increase that velocity. So let's look at a practical application. Uh, when you're riding a bicycle, which gear do you use to maximize your power? All right, to answer that question, let's look at a torque RPM. Or this is basically the same thing as a force and RPMs can be used as velocity curve. All right, so this is telling us that at low RPMs, all right, so when you're um, pedaling slower, you have a, a high torque, and then as you increase that uh, RPM, so you pedal faster and faster, when you're able to pedal faster, your torque production goes down. All right, so to get power, we multiply force times velocity. So we have zero velocity, a high force, and that's zero. And then you just keep doing this and it becomes something, a curve like this. And so this is your power curve. So here is the power curve. So power on the Y, RPMs or velocity on the X, and we see that high power is not at slow velocities, and you don't get high power at really high velocities, but you get your max power somewhere mid-range velocity. So when you're riding a bike, you're not, you don't wanna crank it down to the lowest gear where you just spin your wheels over here, you're not gonna generate a lot of power. You don't put it on the highest gear and try to really gut it out, but mid-range gives you the max power. So let's look at the force velocity curve, and this is from concentric contractions. So you should re recall this graph that at low velocities, you have high forces, and at high velocities, there are low forces. And then if we take power, which is force times velocity, this is what our power curve will look like. And then your peak power occurs right around mid velocity. So let's look at force and power within our muscle, right? So the force velocity, and the power velocity relationship. So I will draw force velocity. And here's our curve. And then I start to train and I increase my, make this a little higher, I increase my force, right? So strength training, increasing my force, increasing my force. And I'm not changing the circumcision series or the length of my muscle. And then if I look at power versus velocity, you'll see an increase. So 
So we have power and velocity, which increases and keeps increasing because of that increase in force. So they have an increase in velocity at the, or an increase in power at the same velocity. And that is similar to these graphs, which hopefully are not too small, that are on the lecture module. All right, so then let's look at force velocity adaptation in another way. So you have force and velocity, sorry. So here's your force velocity curve. And then I want to have not a change in force, but I'm trying to increase my velocity parameters, right? So I say so do this, increase the velocity more, increase the velocity more, but not changing the strength or force production. And so this could be an increase in muscle length or an increase in sarcomeres in series or uh, um, neural uh, rate coding. So let's look at what that does to the power. So we have power versus velocity. We have a power velocity curve. And then the adaptation will increase the power, but shift the velocity to higher velocity. So you'll have an increase in power, but it'll shift over. And then if we look at the graphs, we'll have these, well, that one's there. Um, an increase in length, which shifts the power to higher velocities. So to summarize, if you want a change in power, since power, power is, power is force, force times, times velocity, velocity, any adaptation that affects that max force will increase power, and any adaptation that affects your maximum velocity will also increase power. And so you can create some pretty unique um, uh, power training workouts knowing this these data.